going on guys so I'm on my way home right now and um, I did not do much videotaping this morning all I'm doing right now is just uh, getting on my way home getting schoolwork done so uh, that's working out okay and uh, right now um, so with the Las Vegas shooter which I'm sure you all have heard about by now um, had a bunch of ARs and AKs. Now, I'm not suggesting this, I'm just showing you, in, I'm just giving you information that is known a lot, that uh, with an AK-47, there's a little lip on uh, the hammer, and that catches on the uh, receiver, on the trigger, trigger mechanism, and that's what causes it to go semi-auto. If you file it, that causes it to go fully auto, but you won't control your firing at all. So, he didn't have fully automatic weapons, he designed them. Well, that one he did himself. Now, there's a bump stock for the AR. Now, what that does is the stock, it moves, so as you shoot, you're still pulling the trigger, but as it moves forward and back, it uh, you pull the trigger again as fast as possible. But all you have to do is pull back, and it does it kind of for you. So the gun itself basically moves, and that's how it works. That's how he was able to do fully automatic firing. Now, my dad bought one yesterday because when you have people like that, you don't want to have, like, you want you don't want to go under, you know, you want to have the upper hand. So with crap like that going on, we were going to get one. And also, it's just completely safe. You can switch it to semi-automatic as well. And uh, it has its own pistol grip connected to the stock. I'm just saying. And, uh... It was canceled, so he, it's not illegal in Washington State, so I don't know what's going on, but the government must have some sort of uh, lock on him right now because that's what he used. And um, seeing from what he had, um, should have seen it coming. But uh, the thing is, they're going to start punishing all of us gun owners who follow the rules. The thing is, the gun owners that follow the rules have a lot more ammo and a lot more weapons than what the criminals do. Trust me, if we were the problem, you would know it, okay? So, like, let's say you see someone getting stabbed, they're not going to try to, you know, get knife control. They're just going to be like, oh, well, that sucks. Like, you, that guy got shanked. All right. That's, that happens. But when it's a shooting, it's all about the gun control. When more people get stabbed, then people get shot, you guys want to why? Because the knife is quicker, and uh, I'm not just saying it's more quieter, so people use knives more. And with guns, you know, it's it's the movie's fault. It's Hollywood's fault because of the way they portray a lot of the weapons. For if you have a silencer on it, uh, it mean, immediately it means you're an assassin or you work for the CIA. When mostly CIA work is paperwork, and knowledge, intelligence, central intelligence agency, not Frickin', we're gonna go assassinate everybody that we feel needs to be killed. No, it's it's, it's stupid. All right, so um, that is what's going on, and uh, I just don't understand why all of us have to be punished with it. So I mean, see someone getting a car wreck, you blame the driver. Plain and simple. So when this is shooting, why blame the gun and the person that's using it? Because it's a tool, you know? Just like, you know, this can be a tool. Right here. See? You know, I do sports med. I gotta cut tape. I gotta do a bunch of other crap. I gotta cut boxes. A bunch of other stuff. I don't have this just to hurt someone. It's a tool that is used. And with the gun, it is a tool. Target practice. Hunting. It's a sport now. Three gun, two gun competitions. So what? Doesn't mean you're gonna go after a human being. I mean, it means you certainly will be ready for it if you have to, by all circumstances, but lethal force is always the last option in any case. However, that case being in the military is a little different because the rules of engagement. Yes, we don't want any liable civilians being killed and all that bull crap, but uh, when you see them over there and you need to get permission to take the hill, sorry. It's a little ridiculous. You gotta, you gotta do what you have to do. 
So uh, that's a little different than on civilian use. If someone shoots at you, you don't go, hey, uh, rules of engagement, bro. You can't do that. No. What you're going to do is you're going to pull your goddamn gun out and you're going to defend your property. And so that's what a lot of us rule-abiding gun owners do. It's a sport, it's a hobby, and it's self-defense. And it's one of the most important rights we have, other than freedom of speech. You know, um, the fact that we can have weapons that are similar, the only thing is the action of trigger, um, which it's a pretty good thing, you know, but uh, when you, I'm not saying we should repeal the NFA, but I think some, you should have a permit for an automatic, because when you got, you know, let's say, uh, this is hypothetically, but let's say a government or terrorist came at you with a fully automatic AK-47 and uh, you're sitting here with just a semi-automatic uh, rifle on it. What do you do? Nothing. You can't. You just sit here and you just go pop, 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 pop. But he's just, he's got a mag in you already before you even blink. So, yeah. I know automatics are not that accurate. But still, you can spray a lot as you can see from the Vegas shooting. So, there's no solution no matter how people are going to come with this. Um, honestly, I've accepted that, uh, you know, there are people in this world that will do that. A lot of people go, oh, I can't believe someone would do that. Well, someone just did, so you better believe it. Because the more you try to deny all this crap that's going on, the more this world's going to screw you up. And when you accept the fact that this place is really a hellhole and... Your main goal here is to survive. When people say living, the rich live. The middle class and poor class, they survive. So, yeah. Unless you're smart with your money. Which, uh, we'll get into that later. My economics teacher has said a couple things that I think would be good to know for a couple other people. One thing's called an index fund. Look it up, do it. But, uh, one thing that bothers me is that, um, every time... It's an A. It's an AR. They call it an assault rifle. AR does not mean assault rifle or automatic rifle. It means Armalite rifle. Armalite, the company AR. So that's just—it's stupid. You know, the M16 style rifles have been around for ever since Vietnam. So. Um, a lot of the Americans back then probably wouldn't didn't appreciate it, the M16A1, because it jammed up like an SOB, and it sucked, but that gun, you know, the enemy feared it. It was, like, terrible. They said, oh, don't, oh, watch out for the man with the black gun. You know, that's what they call it, black gun. And uh, also, the funny thing is, is, the helicopters, the Cobras, and the Hueys, they called them uh, metal dragons. That. That's interesting. That's a lot better than calling it a Huey. Oh, it's the Metal Dragon. Heck yeah. But, um, you know, the fact that, like, literally the longest serviced rifle in America, there's different forms of it. The M16, the M4, you know, the AR-15, you know, there's many, there's many of them. But the profile of that gun and the way it functions is the same. However, there is the HK416, which is a piston rifle. Also, the M2, the M27 is also a piston. That's actually, believe it or not, it's better. So, for the M16, all the AR rifles, um, they have what they call a direct gas impingement. A direct gas impingement, which means the gas tube goes all the way to the back of the bolt, or the front of the bolt, and it blows it back. Now, with the uh, piston, the uh, piston itself is connected to the bolt itself, like an AK, basically. And so, the bolt goes back and it fires, but there's no, there's hardly any gas and stuff coming into the receiver, which keeps it clean and makes it more reliable. I'm all for that. But, um, you know, that's, a, that's basically like the marriage of an AK and an M16 right there. Is the piston AR system, and it's great. But, uh, you know, the fact that we are shaming 
one of America's most favorite guns, practically America's Lego for guns, because I mean you can do anything to that to that gun. I mean I've I put stuff on mine. I put stuff on my AK too. I put a new stock and a pistol grip on it. So uh, that's just a lot to think about. It's a lot to concern me, honestly. And uh, also, one thing that ticks me off is when people disrespect the military, such as today I had an incident. So um, I don't want any egotistical assholes to to comment on this because each branch does their own job. All right. The only two that are comparable by any chance is the Marines and Army. Because they both have infantry, they both have EOD, they got a lot of the same guys going on. So just shut up for a moment. So, um, this, uh, let's say, junior, no, uh, sophomore, came up to me and said, is that an Air Force hat? Which it is. And I said, yeah. And then she goes, get the out. And I went, what? She goes, get the hell out. Marines are better, and I looked at her and I just went, do you have any goddamn idea what it's like to even serve? I don't, but I know too much for a freaking civilian. I've worn my dad's uniform, and I have myself been spat on. I've been treated like crap. And people knew why I wore it. Someone took my blouse, my fatigue jacket, and uh, threw it on the roof of a house. How they got it, I don't know. It was in my backpack. They took it, and I was pissed. And, uh, oh, yeah. I, mm. So, yeah, you know, being told a bunch of this crap just pisses me off. I mean, no offense to the Marines. A real enlisted Marine doesn't have that goddamn attitude. There's a few that do, but it's all for, for fun, all right? So, anybody's a vet, you're a freaking vet. At least that's the way it used to be. Vietnam vets, such as my dad, Anybody, you served during Nam? Yeah, we're brothers, man. Because you all went through the same crap. Now it's different. Now we're more diverse. So, it's whatever. You know, I plan on doing the Army National Guard because I want to stay home or stay home here, but uh, still serve my country. Love, love me some mostly peace. But uh, that's what I'm going to do. And, uh, you know, in the end, all branches help each other out. Marines go in, put their first boots on the ground because they are trained riflemen before they're actually in the West. Every Marine is a rifleman, which I think every serviceman should be a rifleman, but you know, whatever. Um, we all have this different jobs. Marines, they're more of a frontline support kind of guys. You know, they're up there right up in the hellhole. Army, that was way too close. Army, they kind of go in after the Marines, you know, uh, the Mar the Army is kind of like, let's go, but there are so many people in the Army that they don't really recruit too much, they don't make such an effort because so many people join the Army, which wise the Army is the biggest branch. Now the Navy is just boats, so mainly we are like a coastal region air support-ish, because the, the main air, air um, you know, like fighters and stuff, uh, air support is the Air Force and the Navy. The Navy was first because the aircraft carriers, but uh, the way the Air Force goes, a lot of ours is also technical. We have a lot of technology stuff going on in the Air Force, and it, it really helps a lot with decoding and all this stuff. And um, with the Navy, it's pretty coastal. You know, we got missiles and all that. But I mean, everybody has a different job, and everybody co goes around. That's why we have them. And if there was really such thing as a best branch, we'd only have one. So, just put that to thought. You know, don't disrespect someone just because they wear a different uniform than you do. And especially, don't disrespect someone who's wearing a uniform and you're not wearing one. Because, even I plan to... I'm enlisting. I'm doing it. That gal practically spit in my face, spat in my dad's uniform just because of the branch. I said, you have no idea what it's like. She doesn't. And I might not have the full idea, but I know a lot more than I should as a civilian. So, this is my rant, honestly, because this is just kind of, this is just what bothered me today. And, uh, yeah, consider it a gripe, I guess, I don't know. But, uh, it's, yeah, it's ridiculous. 
And uh, also, by the way, thanks for watching yesterday's vlog. It was pretty funny. Uh, just laying on the escalator. We only shot that once. We only shot that footage once. We just, I just saw the couple and I went, oh, you look good. You look good. You look like I can piss you off. I purposely, uh, when I laid down, I purposely, uh, you know, hit the guy's cap on accident to get the, the tension. So they looked down and they saw what I was doing. It was, it was great. Went to get air for a little bit and uh, that was really about it. Went there for like, we jumped around for like 15 minutes and then did a little bit of arcade. A little bit of lunch. Then went to McDonald's and then after that I just drove home. So, uh, that uh, experiment was a success and uh, I am on my way home right now and my stomach still hurts like an SOB. And I don't know if I explained this earlier, but um, I used to, I have TV dinners sometimes for lunch and they thaw out throughout the day and some days I forget. So I put them back into the freezer. So what happened was this was chicken, it was like chicken nuggets, brownie, mac and cheese was in it. It thawed out and it was in my backpack for three days. I put it back in the freezer. Yeah, let's just say I ate it, and it was not good. It was terrible. Horrible. It was terrible. They ate it, and I went, you've got to be kidding me, because the chicken tasted a little funny, but I thought that was just a little bit weird, and then once I ate the mac and cheese, I went, oh my god. I, this needs to burn. Just, it needs to, you know, go. So yeah. Anyways, um, I'm just pulling into my house right now, guys, and, uh, I'm gonna get on some schoolwork and such, and uh, I guess I never. Oh, by the way, um, what we've done with the house. Basketball hoop is gone. Let's get a little closer here. Yeah, it's close enough. Basketball hoop is gone. All those bushes are gone. That one that I planted over there, which sucked because I screwed up my knee. And uh, that is trimmings from that tree, which I'm assuming the neighbor did. So that is kind of what new. We like the house kind of, we like the property kind of clean. And uh, having the basketball hoop not being there anymore is going to help me with mowing. Although there's that bush over there. So, oh, look, the neighbors are arriving. So I will talk to you guys later if anything more goes on. Uh, you'll see in just a couple seconds. And if not, uh, have a good day, evening, or night, wherever you are.